G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday sort of afternoon here in Australia, market moved up a little bit again, so 2.64 trillion, getting close to that 2.7 trillion, which would be very, very nice. BTC dominance down ever so slightly, not too much, but still under 45% there. Uh, down in volume, but the BTC price finally moving up again, $62,500, trying to creep back up to that sort of, you know, 64, uh, even better, $67,000 mark, and gas price has risen ever so slightly. And I think that is uh, to do with, again, today's a green day. People are moving stuff around, stable coins going in and out, and people just, you know, swapping into different projects which really pushes up the ETH gas prices when things like that happen so green days generally the gas price goes up all right so what's done the best in the last 24 hours top 100 holy dooly safe moon of all the coins to lead the way all right 20.3 percent so that's uh, quite a move uh curve has had quite a nice move there 17 uh, point uh, nearly eight percent there near protocol 16 phantom uh, icp out of nowhere making a move uh, engine i spoke about this a while ago i thought it was looking like uh it wasn't a bad uh at a bad price point and look you know matic i was speaking about that as well look even synthetics is starting to make a move so today's a really good day but what we need to remember is generally these coins that are pumping today in the next 24 to 48 hours you're probably going to see a retracement from them now not guaranteed some of these can just continue to go they could have another couple of days worth of you know upside to them but generally coins will go up for you know 24 48 hours maybe three days look some can go for even longer but generally after a couple of days if they've been pumping you can generally just kind of wait for that retracement that might take again another 24 48 hours or something if you're looking to get a good entry price so look some really nice moves there now one of the biggest movers in the top 150 200 was also secret network uh, it had a really good good move it's Move like 333%, 335% since September 30th, and it's been up 94% just in this last week. So uh, a project that I really, really like, it's not in the top 100, it's still around about, I think, number 150, something like that. Uh, I wouldn't be trying to ape into it just yet because it's uh, pumped quite a lot, but keep an eye out for it. Look for a retracement, uh, check the charts and find a good buy-in point. But again, none of that is financial financial advice that's just my personal opinion I'm not a financial advisor and I'll never give you financial advice but I really like secret network they got some big things coming uh, and I would definitely uh, in my personal opinion be keeping a lookout for some nice entry points because I think there's a lot more to come from them but anyway moving on we've seen what's done well so what hasn't done well then in the last in the last 24 hours in the top 100 there we go, Kasama down 3%, E-Gold, Zcash, Decred, I mean, look, hardly anything. We got some very, very sort of small, minor losses, uh, and obviously the gains are pretty good. And again, that's from the market simply moving 1.4%. You know, wait until you see days where the entire market is up, you know, 5 6%, and then you can see some real sort of crazy sort of stuff. But we're not there quite yet. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart, see where we're at. So as we can see, we pumped up, we got a little bit of a retracement going on, but we're still within this long-term upwards trending channel. So it's good to see us back there. And again, look, you can see it is just bouncing perfectly off here. So this uh, upwards trending chart channel, charting channel, sorry, uh, has been pretty good so far. Now we'll have to wait and see because it could still change. I've drawn it out even further. And, you know, maybe we need to do a new one from down here at the bottom of the depths. Maybe this will be the new channel. But for now, this seems to be holding pretty well. And as you can see, we're just under the old all-time high at the moment. So again, this could be resistance. And it sort of is resistance at the moment, actually. Not could be resistance, it is. So we had that breakout and we could play around here for a little while before we start to uh, make our way up again. We'll have to wait and see. But I don't see anything at the moment that makes me think the market is going to have any sort of major correction. But in saying that, we've bounced from here. If we have a red day today and then another red day tomorrow, you know, some people will say the more times you, you know, bounce off something, the less likely it is you're going to break it. But it also depends on whether it's in a bull market or a bear market. 
uh, people change their minds about it. But the more time we kind of play around and hit this mark, I would say the more likely we are to break it uh, as opposed to uh, in a bear market where you're coming down and bouncing off resistance. The more times you bounce off it, you're probably more likely to eventually fall through it. But each to their own, you know, people have different uh, opinions. I, again, firmly believe we would, you know, this was a correction, not a bear market. Although I have said before that maybe this is the new bear market where it only lasts for a couple of months. I don't know about that just yet. We'll have to wait and see. Time's going to be the big uh, teller of that story. But yeah, I didn't think this was a bear market. I thought this was just a correction. Again, we pumped up a lot uh, and come down and we're basically now back where we were, you know, what was that? Back in April, uh, mid to sort of early April. So I don't yeah, see anything drastic happening, but in saying that, look, we have had a fairly big move and no significant drawbacks, but I guess you could kind of say this was a somewhat significant drawback and we had some sort of crazy uh, manipulative wicks there. So we'll have to wait and see, but yeah, nothing really says to me at the moment that anything bad should be coming, but hey, as soon as you say that, that's generally when something bad <laughs> will come along, so hopefully I haven't jinxed us uh, and I'm really regretting saying that right now, but anyway... Moving on, only a couple of stories I want to look at. Look, MasterCard making some big moves. So they're going to allow all banks on its network to provide Bitcoin services. And I don't think it's just Bitcoin services. I think it's going to be crypto services. Uh, USDC is going to be part of it. I think Litecoin, Ethereum, and even Bitcoin Cash are going to be in there. All the ones that have uh, kind of been popularized and they don't look like they're going to have any regulatory issues. So MasterCard making really big moves. And then we got another MasterCard one over here. Um, backed their shares went up 120% during uh, yesterday's trading session, slash kind of today's trading session, stateside time. And it's because they're partnering with MasterCard and Fiserv. I don't even know what Fiserv is really. But here, on Monday, the 25th of October, MasterCard announced it would be working with digital asset platform Bact to allow its customers based in the United States to buy, sell, and hold digital assets through custodial wallets. On the same day, global priv uh, payment provider Fiserv also announced a, a strategic sorry, collaboration with Bact to offer merchant-facing digital asset services. So again, ladies and gentlemen, the big money is coming. You can see it. And again, all the payment rails are starting to happen. And that is the funny thing. The big money isn't even here yet. Big money has come. This is the early parts. And really, the big money will come probably in the, whenever the next big dip is. I think you're going to see a whole lot more money come in. There's going to be people sitting on the sides and they're all going to go, okay, they're probably waiting for whenever the next bear market is. But I think, you know, there's probably a... A healthy correction at around about a hundred thousand could be a little bit before might be eighty thousand now whether that's going to be the next bear market or not I'm not exactly sure but I think around about between eighty to a hundred thousand there's probably a hefty correction and it could be nearly fifty percent correction and if that's not the bear market and it just kind of you know gets down to fifty percent you know over a matter of like a month or sort of so and then starts to make its way back up I think that's where you'll see some really big money because all the channels will be open. There'll most likely be more uh, Bitcoin ETFs, you know, maybe even a spot Bitcoin ETF, although I don't know about that. I think the spot coin, the spot market, sorry, uh, ETF will really be the one that will push it into the next uh, kind of leg up because that's the one that will really uh, determine the price. You know, these futures back ones, they're just based on the price. There's no actual Bitcoin being held with those. So I think that's probably what will be the catalyst to push Bitcoin higher. I think we have a correction, whenever that may be, December, January, somewhere around about there. And then I think somewhere around about there, maybe a spot Bitcoin ETF comes out, maybe Grayscale's one. And then that really starts to push things even higher again. Now, again, that's just uh, me sort of, you know, making a prediction as they would say I, you know there's no guarantees I don't have any inside source on that I'm just trying to think ahead and thinking all right you know what would kind of drive the market further and I think a, a spot market ETF would probably be one of those things but look there's still plenty of other you know news out there that could definitely push the price uh, you know more nation states getting on board and legalizing Bitcoin you know there's a ton of different things you know Big players come out with their last uh, quarterly uh, purchase and all of a sudden say that, you know, they've put 
billions or millions at least of dollars into Bitcoin, all sorts of things like that. China all of a sudden says it's, you know, getting back into uh, Bitcoin and allowing it, although I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, there's plenty of things like that that could really push the price higher. Really, I'm just waiting to see what happens around that kind of eighty to one hundred thousand dollar mark, because a lot of people are going to want to take profits at a hundred thousand, like a lot, and a lot of people will be trying to front run that. So it might even be seventy five thousand, eighty thousand that it all happens first. But it'll be interesting to see if that sell off quickly gets bought up, because if it quickly gets bought up, those who are happy to take profits and they're unlikely to sell major amounts at a hundred thousand they're probably just going to sell enough to maybe get their money back depending on where they got in but then there'll be plenty of other people i think on the sidelines waiting to buy that dip and should bitcoin say get to eighty thousand and it gets pushed down into the 30s i think people will be all over it i know i will be uh, if bitcoin has a correction from eighty thousand and gets you know to 40 uh, low 40s uh, high 30s I will be starting to buy. Now, don't get me wrong. As I've said before, I'm never going to pile all my money in because if I start to buy Bitcoin at 40000 and it goes down to 10000 I don't want to put all my money in at 40000 But I will absolutely be making a purchase at that kind of $40,000 mark uh, and I'll keep dollar cost averaging in all the way down because you just don't know where the bottom is with Bitcoin and that's the safest one. And, you know, again, I'm not thinking that is what's going to happen. I don't think that the kind of seventy, eighty thousand dollar mark or even the hundred thousand dollar mark is going to be the end of the bull run, but I could be wrong. I think we're probably more likely to get to around 150, somewhere between 100 and 150 anyway. I think really would be the minimum I would think that this bull run uh, would get to, but never financial advice, just my personal opinion. We'll have to wait and see. All right. Seems like the SEC is finally going to get their claws into at least some of crypto because they haven't been doing so well. So the US Treasury has given the SEC considerable authority over stable coins like Tether. So it looks like Gary Gensler is going to be able to come in and you know do his thing because it, it seems like he wanted to, but so far he just hasn't really been able to do a whole lot. Uh, and, you know, I just I don't know how the SEC is going to control things like stable coins. They're not securities. It's just money, and the SEC, uh, you know, govern over securities, uh, not money. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see exactly how that works. Now they did say here that currently it's in a in a draft freight phase, sorry, and the report called for Congress to create a separate bank charter for stablecoin issuers. And I think that's probably the good way to go. Again, don't try and fit this new technology into old rules. We probably need to come up with new rules for this new technology that can be at least somewhat based around, you know, previous principles, but it can't be the same. That's just going to, again, it's like trying to fit, you know, a square into a circle or a circle into a square, whatever. It just doesn't work. You need to come up with new framework. So that part I like. But the downside is this could come really hard at stable coins and really have a big dent on the market. We don't know exactly what their plans are, how they're going to you know, legislate it and regulate it and things like that. So it has me a little worried. So I am trying to you know, make sure I've got plenty of cash on the side, not that I have a whole lot of cash, but really I'm not DCAing into things too much at the moment. I'm trying to keep that uh, cash reserve on the side. Uh, to make sure that if there are any significant dips, I can take advantage of it because this is definitely something that worries me. This could be the catalyst of a, a pretty harsh correction. And look, it could even be the catalyst of the next bear market. We'll have to wait and see because we just don't know exactly what they're going to do and how they're going to rule it. Uh, look, you know, Tether's the biggest one out there and they've had their issues, but look, so did USDC. They weren't back... Uh, dollar for dollar neither of them so that's something that they're most likely going to have to do so we just got to wait and see but this is something that definitely has me concerned and if it comes out and it's not you know we're not going to get super favorable regulation we may get somewhat favorable regulation but it's still going to be you know the old finance trying to look after themselves so i think you know these eight percent uh, per annum returns that you know you can get on stable coins at the moment, I think they're going to be a thing of the past. They are going to come right down and it's basically going to make it so the banks can compete. And unfortunately, the banks uh, and you know 
central banks, they can't compete with 8%. They're probably going to be struggling to be able to try and compete with sort of 4%, but somehow they'll probably make it that people can get, you know, 2 to 3 to maybe 4%. I don't know how that's going to work exactly, but this is definitely something that has me concerned. You know, it doesn't have to be bad. It could be good. You know, maybe they prove us all wrong and we have this favourable, you know, regulation, but I just get the feeling like it won't. I feel like it's going to be the opposite and it's going to most likely lead to a big sell-off and it could be the start of the next bear market. Just keep an eye out for this. All right, last but not least, $4 billion public pension fund to invest in Bitcoin-related products. So this is the Korean Teachers Credit Fund and they are putting in $4 billion and they say that uh, while it wants to invest in spot Bitcoin ETFs, uh, that's not possible at the moment, so they're going to have to go for futures products and things like that. Now, it's not just them, and I brought some of this uh, news to you a while ago. I mean, it wasn't me personally. I didn't get the inside scoop, but I was telling you from stories that I read. So the report also pointed to other cases such as Houston Firefighters Relief and Retirement Fund. They recently purchased Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, as more validation is growing for the cryptocurrency landscape. And Australia's fifth largest pension fund that has $69 billion is also looking into getting into the crypto market. So... There's all these, you know, big, big money institutions that are still yet to come. These are literally just some of the early ones. I mean, if Australia's fifth largest pension fund can get in on this, uh, you know, long term, I think they will do extremely well. But it all depends on, number one, what they buy. If it's just Bitcoin or it's a, you know, mixture of things and they need to be able to hold through the volatility. Because one of the big problems is once we get a whole lot of big business in there, the whales are gonna try and crash the price to scare all these big firms out and so they'll sell and you know possibly add a loss and all the rest of it and then they'll just scoop it up for cheap. So that's what you need to remember. These are these are the games that are gonna be played because it's all super great now and the whales want all these other people to get in and buy their Bitcoin up because they're only gonna sell enough just to keep them happy and then they're gonna try and do a big mass uh, sell off because they're gonna have taken profits all the way up and then they go radio bang and they sell a big large amount that'll really push the price down and then again unfortunately you'll probably see some of these bigger institutions panic and sell for a loss hopefully they're smart enough and have done their research to not do that because then if the big whales simply dump hopefully these big companies are going to be like you and me have cash sitting on the side so when you see the 20 plus 30 40 50 percent plus dips in bitcoin you got cash to go yes thank you i'm taking some of that and then we won't have so much massive whale activity but unfortunately the problem is retail they'll be one of the first to panic they just can't handle it they'll be out very quickly and they won't have cash sitting on the side because they'll have sold for a loss they'll just say i knew this crypto was a scam and that'll be it they'll be done that is you know the saying is retail money, dumb money. I just like to call it new money because I don't think uh, you know dumb money is really appropriate because I don't think anyone who invests in anything is dumb. They just knew and they don't understand volatility and they probably don't have a lot of experience, hence why uh, they're that new money and they won't be able to hold, you know, handle the volatility. Again, you just got to go look back at charts. At the moment, no one's ever lost money investing in Bitcoin unless they sold for a loss. All they had to do was hold and they were in profit. And particularly if they held for four years or longer, they're well in profit. You know, the past doesn't always tell you what's going to happen in the future, but it's a really good indicator. And so for me, I buy Bitcoin, you know, I'm dollar cost averaging 90% of the time, not always when it's really starting to spark up, then I definitely slow down. And if it's in some kind of parabolic state, then I'm just not touching it. I'm trying, I'm well, not trying, I usually was and uh, usually am, I should say, until not long ago, always having cash on the side. Because if you don't have cash on the side, you can't buy the dip. Now, you can't buy the dip if you're not DCAing. If you've just got $1,000, you throw it all in at once, then, you know, basically sit on it and come back to it in five years. That's probably your best bet because you won't be able to buy the dip. But if you're DCAing, just constantly have cash on the side. So for me, if everything's in price discovery, I'm putting 50% plus 
into cash and having it sitting on the sides waiting for the dips. If things are down 30 to 40, 50% or more, then that's when I'm aggressively going after them. Doesn't mean I'll throw everything in. Just because Bitcoin has a 50% retracement doesn't mean I go right here, I'm all into this Bitcoin at 50 because it could go 80, 90%. We just don't know. Particularly if Bitcoin has some crazy blow off top, and I've said this before, if it gets to 300, 400,000, and particularly like in the next kind of couple of months, two and a half months or something like that, then I, I think a well over 50% retracement would be highly likely. If it got to something like, you know, again, 288, nearly 400,000, I think you see Bitcoin way back down below 100,000 and that's well over 50%. But no one knows for sure. Maybe it gets to 400,000 and only retraces back down to 200,000. It's really, really hard to know. Hence why you just want to make sure that you've got cash on the sides. So particularly at around about that 50% discount, doesn't matter what price Bitcoin gets to, that's where I'm starting to look at buying some. And I'd probably DCA in very small amounts to see if it continues to drop a whole lot more if that, or if that is maybe the bottom and things are starting to move back up. But anyway, none of that's financial advice. You know that. I'm not here to give you financial advice. I'm just here to talk about crypto and hopefully inspire you to at least look into it because I'm really glad that I did. And it's been a couple of years now that I've been, uh, you know, I was in out of the space. I was out of the space for about a year and a bit, but I've been back in for, you know, the last at least sort of two years and it's the best decision I've ever made. But those down times, they're hard to get through. But that is where the biggest opportunities come. If you're just getting into crypto now, I'm not saying the biggest opportunity couldn't still be yet to come from here, but we're probably more likely to go through some kind of bear market sooner rather than later. And there's no guarantee that the prices you're buying in now are going to be lower than what the bear market gets to. Uh, again, you know, if we only get to 70, 80,000 and we go into a bear market, I think a 10, $12,000 Bitcoin could absolutely be likely and the altcoins will just get absolutely hammered if that happens. So that's what you need to remember. Do your research, make sure you understand the cycles and that generally you just got to hold for long enough and you'll be in profit. But not all coins are going to do that. And the 10,000 coins that are out there, I really do think you'd be lucky if there's 100 to 200 really good ones. And even the ones that seem really good now, may not be that good in the future. Uh, and I'm not throwing shade, like uh, NEO was the hot thing in the last cycle. It has not performed very well. Litecoin was one of the hot things in the last cycle. It has not performed very well. EOS was massive in the last cycle. It has really underperformed. Bitcoin Cash was massive as well in the last cycle. It is, you know, those coins, you hardly even hear of them now. And they don't always go, you know, some of those have not gone back to all-time highs and probably never will. So just be careful. Whatever coin you're in now may seem like the best thing ever, but there's no guarantees. And it doesn't matter how good they are and what kind of team they are, because they had good teams uh, and good things behind them last time, they may just never come back. Invest wisely. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Should all be on that game train. And I'll see you next time.